dear learners, uh, now we will say something about uh, conservation of reptiles, one of the most uh, heartbreaking topic and also deals with the survival of the species and why these animals are so fast disappearing from this earth. So, as you know, reptiles include uh, crocodiles, turtles, lizards and snakes. So, out of that, probably the most threatened uh, reptile is the gharial, as you know. So, that was the earlier distributional range of uh, gharial. Yeah, gharial was abundant in the Pakistan river system, Irrawaddy river system. Then gharial was also present in Ganges river system, Brahmaputra river system and also in Irrawaddy river system of Myanmar. But what happened now? Now gharials got extinct from Pakistan, gharial got extinct from Orissa also, from Myanmar also they got extinct, from Bangladesh they got extinct and now all the global population of gharial is restricted to very small population in Indo-Nepal border called Katharania Ghat Wildlife Sanctuary of Uttar Pradesh and then another the largest population is restricted to Chambal river of uh, Uttar Pradesh and also Madhya Pradesh. So this is the story with gharial and they disappeared also from the Brahmaputra river system of northeast India. So once they were abandoned but now uh, they are not there, but probably we also nowadays we listen to a very strong appeal in our media is that we know about only one four one one left. There is the uh, story with the tiger. Uh, ARCL is creating that campaign and they say that one four one one left only the number of the tiger in India. But what happened to this gharial? Nobody knows uh, uh, how many gharial left, and you know uh, it's. Gharial is now considered as C, uh, CITES, that is Appendix 1. IUCN Red List, it is considered as Critically Endangered Species. In India, it is under Wildlife Protection Act. And in Nepal, there is uh, also protected species. But uh, there is a huge crisis going on with Gharial. Uh, in the year 1970, suddenly, uh, Government of India and also research organization realized that there are only 50 to 60 numbers of gharials are left in India, which is uh, stunning. Uh, once they were so abundant, then the uh, government came up with all uh, effort and all international agencies came to save gharial. And then there was a lot of reintroduction, means they were bred in the zoo and in captive breeding centers and then they released in the wild. And then it is a success story, one of the famous success stories. But what happened is they again started disappearing uh, because we released the gharial in the river system but we failed to control the population, the human population. So human population always kept on increasing and they uh, taken the gharial habitats and in that way again gharial started disappearing very fast. So in the year 2006 and 2007 uh, census it was found that only 200 mature breeding adult individuals of gharials are left in the wild. So the global population of gharial is not 1411 but only 200, 200. So which is much more endangered than our tiger but we don't know much about gharial and there is not much of appeals also. So there are a lot of gharials, large animals which are dying in our river systems. Uh, what are the threats? Why they are drying? Because gharial always prep, um, agriculture, sand mining, livestock grazing, disturbance, and fishing. These are the main criteria where uh, which um, uh, which are responsible for gharial uh, death and also gharial disappearance. Because freshwater river and aquatic water system are the most uh, frequently used resource. Because freshwater people directly depend on freshwater ecosystem. As you see. Uh, civilization grow along the river. So there was always pressure on the river and because of that there was expansion of uh, sand mining, expansion of agriculture up to the river bank and there were a lot of cattle grazing. So what happened? Gharial is a very very specialized animal. So uh, specialized animal in that way Gharial needs a very tranquil river environment with big river, very deep pool of river with undisturbed sand beach. Uh, where he, he can bask and also he can nest or they um, gharial nest and there are a lot of fishes 
So what happened nowadays? There will be ex there is excessive fishing nowadays in our river system because of human pressure. Every one kilometer of our Brahmaputra is probably having a net. So what happened? This large animal has to move a lot. So in that way, their snout got stuck in the net, and they cannot come on the surface and they die. So <coughs> that's why and uh, Gharial ensured a very healthy river eco ecosystem with full of birds and turtles and tortoise will be there and also other animals like uh, otter. So Gharial's presence means a very very healthy riverine ecosystem which is which is very fast disappearing from all the uh, areas of northeast India as well as the whole India. So this is the case with Gharial. Gharial is very much threatened and much of the survival of the Gharial is now left on the uh, reintroduction possibility. We are looking forward to find some suitable place where we can go for reintroduction and to build up a population for Gharial in northeast India. Then coming to another threatened group of animal are the turtles. So few uh, 10 years back there was nobody who was saying something to save turtles because turtles were never considered as an animal which should be saved. So people ate them a lot. There were international trade like this. This is a picture by WCS where thousands and thousands, millions of turtles were traded to the China and all the Southeast Asian countries. And they were traded, they were eaten a lot. And in local markets also, turtles were eaten without any, uh, um, uh, without any uh, problem. There was a lot of trade involved in that. So what happened in that, in this way, we came to a scenario that within suddenly within 10 years we realized that we are going to lose most of our turtle species and this is the scenario with uh, northeast india where most of the turtles are found in uh, india there are threatened category 40 percent are vulnerable 20 percent endangered 15 percent are critically endangered so all this threatened category makes the sense that now government is implementing a lot of strict rules that there should not be any turtle trade there should not be any international trade also and there are a lot of conservation efforts for turtles but um, these are the certain animals gharial turtles they are disappearing because of human's folly and uh, they are directly affected by the humans uh, um, uh, destruction of uh, forest land and aquatic land aquatic waters and all those bodies but there are some animals who are actually uh, also uh, came to a uh, threatened category because of only habitat destruction but otherwise they are quite adaptive these are small animals the lizards and snakes so these lizards and snakes actually are um, they are most of them are indicator species means they indicate the change in the ecosystem and uh, what happened is uh, they uh, snakes are the most efficient uh, uh, rodent controller agricultural pest controller how because snake have a very elongated body so snake are the only one animal who can actually go inside the rat hole and kill the rat and eat it so that's why snake are the most efficient rat, rat controlling machine created designed by nature so uh, there are hundreds of millions of tons of food grain which are destroyed by rats in our paddy field are actually saved by snake and then their uh, snakes also represent tremendous option value option value in the way because snake venom is the most precious element they have so what happened is this uh, snake venom uh, is on uh, uh, scientists found that snake venom is also uh, having potential to cure uh, tumorous growth because it has a tissue digesting property so snake venom can be utilized in uh, in uh, cancerous growth and also uh, destruction of tumor and malignant and all so that's why snake venom has got a option well which we don't know but that's why we need to save these animals coming to uh, say snake views you know snakes are always destroyed always killed and their conservation there many of the snakes are threatened only because we we thought all the snakes uh, snakes are venomous and they can kill us but uh, we should uh, recognize that snake bite happens in only two circumstances that is either you stepped on the snake uh, or you try to catch a snake so in these two circumstances otherwise there is no snake coming us uh, coming to us and beat us so
So, if we can avoid these two simple circumstances, then we probably can avoid snake bite. Then, ignorance is the fear. Ignorance, we, we, we do not like to know about snakes. Just uh, these days, there was a lot of uh, awareness by the uh, TV channels like Discovery and National Geographic. So, our kids or our younger generation are much aware now. But what happened is that they know more about uh, South African or uh, South American rattlesnake, South African mamba, black mamba, all this giant anaconda. They know more about them, but they do not know about our own snake like our cobra, our python and our uh, cat snakes uh, which are here. So, what is that their knowledge is only uh, it's like depend on those television channels and all. So, still our they, there is a lot of ignorance for this. Then ophidiophobia that is the snake phobia is taught is not inherited. We have not got ophidiophobia from our parents because there are lakhs of people die from road accident from cars by running over by car. But we never say to our children that um, car is dangerous or car, don't uh, go near car or something. We, we should not say that. We just like, like cars. But car is one of the most big killer. Um, snake only kills something around 20,000 people, but car kills lakhs of people. So, uh, ophidiophobia is taught. It's not inherited. Actually, uh, it's not inherited because we haven't got it from our parents. Ophidiophobia or the snake phobia is only taught uh, while we uh, we came to this uh, uh, along our age. So this is one of the thing because you know uh, the car and road accident used to kill uh, lakhs of people in India, and there are only twenty thousand probably death from snake bite. But still we afraid snake a lot. But we we never say to our kids that yeah uh, car is dangerous or uh, like this. But uh, there are more number of mortalities associated with uh, uh, road accidents. We just uh, tell our kids that okay, while going to while crossing the road, you should look to your left. We should look to your right, and then cross the road. And that's all. That gave them knowledge to save themselves from the vehicles. But in case of snake, we just tell our say our kids that yeah, all snakes are dangerous, and that creates the ophidiophobia. And we st from that day we started. Uh, um, ignoring started uh, hating snakes uh, from that day because we believe started believing that all snakes are dangerous this is just because we don't know if we just help our kids or uh, our younger generation that okay you need to these are the only few venomous species of snake found in our area and just try to learn them because we learn so many things why it is not possible to learn 10 species of uh, snake which are venomous it is very much uh, possible in this modern age of uh, internet and uh, all those facilities so we can learn this but we don't want to do this but that doesn't mean that we for um, uh, for knowing a snake we need to catch it we can recognize the beauty of nature we can recognize the uh, animal and appreciate its role in nature by from the distance just by not killing it so let's learn to enjoy and respect all the natures that have provided us, including the snakes. Or else, it, the time is to know because soon it will be too late to learn. Thank you.